Hey, welcome back guys. I just got a bunch of batteries in the mail and I ordered them with the wrong connector on the end. I do it every time. I could easily cut this off and put an XU60 connector on it, but uh, a lot of you guys have requested videos on how to replace your battery and balance leads. So I figured why not do it now. I'll talk about the parts list as we go along and um, all the parts I'm using. I will leave links to them in the description below. First I'm going to take this uh, heat shrink off. I really don't like this heat shrink anyway. One, because it's really slick, and two, it doesn't really provide any protection. Uh, at the end of this video, when I put new heat shrink on, I'll give you the size that I'm using and the type, and I like that stuff a lot better. As a matter of fact, um, I always change the heat shrink out as soon as I get batteries, even if they do have the right connector on it. Okay, heat shrink is off. Now we need to take this uh, outer cover off. And whenever you do this, be very careful with it because we will reuse this. Depending on the batteries that you have, there might be hot glue in there. And uh, you can take that off. We will not reuse that. And just to keep this out of the way, I'm going to wrap it around and tape it to the back side. So something like that. And now it's going to stay like that and be out of the way. I will go ahead and take this hot glue off. Okay, now we can get a good idea of how this works uh, with your balance leads. They will be different lengths, and also you have to make sure you have it in uh, the right order because if you get this uh, flip-flopped and backwards, whenever you plug this into your balance charger, then it's something's going to fry, either this battery or the next battery, whichever one is the weakest. And then the main battery leads is pretty simple. You just have one positive on one end, negative on the other end. So I will start by removing everything. Uh, the only tip I have here is you want to get this off as soon as possible. You don't want to leave your soldering iron on for too long because if you overheat batteries, they can explode. I've had it happen to me before. So just get in and out really quick. What I do is just jack up the heat on my soldering iron. That way the solder gets wet faster and you can remove it faster. All right, I highly doubt that you have damaged battery and balance leads, but I'll be covering both of those, like I said. Uh, if you have one or the other, you don't have to remove both, but I will be re removing both. Before you remove the uh, balance leads, you need to take note at, like I said, which way this connector is facing and which wire is positive and uh, things like that. So you don't want to get this backward. The balance lead that I will be using to replace this is uh, you know multiple colors this end wire is brown which normally means ground but it's not the case so if I hold this like this it lines up so I will be placing this brown wire on this uh, they're all power wires this just lets the red wire lets you know which orientation it's in uh, sorry if I didn't explain that sooner Okay, I don't like how long it's taking this one to get wet, so I'm going to let it sit and cool off for a little while. Okay, fast forwarding a little bit, it's cooled off. Uh, this time I'm actually going to put some solder on the end of my soldering iron, because sometimes uh, that just helps out. Wow, this one really doesn't want to come off. I'm going to let it cool off again. While I'm waiting, another thing I forgot to mention, um, there are different balance leads. You have some for 2S, 3S, 4S, 5, 6, so make sure you buy the right one for whatever uh, cell battery you are using. Okay, this time I'm going to add solder to it because that's a surefire way of uh, getting all the solder wet and hot enough to come off. There we go. Now you want to take your new lead and cut it to length. I like the length of uh, this lead, so I'll be cutting all my wires to the same size. I'm going to do this off camera just because it's faster, but you get the idea. Just line up two at a time and then cut it. Okay, now this is cut to size. So uh, I just want to expose some of the uh, tips. Okay, now I'm going to pretend the ends. And now it's ready to go on. So uh, when you do this, absolutely make sure you are doing this 
uh, not only do you have the wires in the right order, but also you have the connector facing the right way and not like upside down or anything. Like I said, you, you'll fry something when you go to charge the battery. And we're all done. Now time for the main battery leads. You can buy these already made or you can make them yourself. I already made this one off camera. Alright, I went ahead and uh, tinned the ends. Once again, make sure you're putting these on the correct way. Now before we put this back together, I'm going to place some electrical tape in here and it's going to be underneath this brown and green wire but on top of the red and yellow wire. That way in case of a crash, if this jacket ever breaks, I don't want it contacting uh, you know, any of the solder or anything else and because that's going to make it short against one another. Which at the time would be fine but whenever you go to charge your battery that's when you would uh, have a problem. So I will just place it over just like that. In fact I'm going to do two strips just to be sure. Okay now we are golden. Remember that hot glue we took off in the beginning? You can put hot glue back on but I'm just going to put more electrical tape on top of these and one more strip. Now let's take this cover back Oh, screwed that up. Place this right on top. Stick it down and rewrap it. Now, as far as heat shrink, I'll be using this uh, clear stuff. And for this size battery, I'll be using 40 millimeter. I'm going to cut it just a little bit longer than what I actually need because once it starts shrinking, uh, it's going to do just that, shrink. Getting this stuff on can be a pain in the ass. Uh, what I do is get it started and you get it about halfway on and then it stops. So what I do is just do that and then take this in and I blow into it. I blow hot air into it and that moisture will collect on the inside and that's just going to make it slide on. I don't know if you guys can see the moisture or not, but it's there and it's sliding. I'll now take a large heat gun, uh, but you may be able to use a hair dryer. It just might take longer. And hold it by the leads and heat it up. After that, I'll just take my wire cutters and carefully trim around this just to clean it up a little bit. Okay, there's your repaired battery. Now the very last thing there is to do is test it out. And what I mean by that is instead of plugging this into my uh, balance board and battery charger, I'm just going to take a little, uh, like a cell checker thing like this and plug it into the leads to make sure that I got the leads right. Uh, you probably want to do this before you put the whole battery back together, but I wasn't thinking about it at the time. Okay, and it's working. Just gonna check all the cells. And we're good. Another thing that I forgot to mention is uh, once I'm completely done, I take a silver Sharpie marker, or you can use black, doesn't matter. But I like to write the brand, the size of the battery in milliamps. I don't write the cell count because through the clear heat shrink you can see how many cells it has. I also like writing not the date but the month that I purchased the batteries in just to give me a little reminder of how old they are. And if you want you can write the C rating as well. Uh, I, I don't because I just keep it memorized. So that's it guys. There's your battery lead and balance lead repair. If this helped you out, if you could just give me a like. Uh, look in the description below for the parts that I used. Thanks for watching and I will see you again soon.